59 years ago, a group of world leaders and experts from different backgrounds were asked to meet in Europe to discuss global affairs. The ultra-exclusive event was called the Bilderberg Meetings. What exactly is discussed at this conference is kept secret. Media is not allowed inside, and only a select few are ever invited. We're talking world leaders here. So it's a bit of a big deal that Premier Brad Wall was asked to attend this year's Bilderberg Meetings in England. Premier Wall joins us on the line now to tell us what he can. <laughs> Good morning. Hi, Sheila. So tell me about getting this uh, this invitation and your reaction to it. Well, it came by uh, former Premier Frank McKenna. Uh, we chatted on the phone, and uh, uh, he indicated that this was, this was going to be a possibility. And, and was there, did I have an interest? And I said, I did. Uh, that's a uh, that's sort of a long story made made fairly short, <laughs> and uh, and off uh, we go today. And how much did you know about Bilderberg before you were invited? I knew a little bit about it. I mean, I, I it's a uh, it's fairly well known that it that it occurs regularly. But you're right, it, the, the the topics aren't necessarily well known in specificity. But I I would say I think there's some change in that regard, uh, even with this particular conference that's being held, because there is a. a on the website now, the uh, the Bilderberg Group has released the, the list of topics and all of the participants, which I think has not been released in the past. So mm. I think they're taking steps towards a bit more disclosure. And the topic list is, is I think, wouldn't, wouldn't surprise anybody. Lots of talk about the fiscal situation in Europe, lots of talk about the international economy, um, discussions on a number of foreign affairs issues that are you know, percolating, especially in the Middle East, but across the world. So I don't think it would surprise anybody that this is what's being discussed. There are people from all political spectrums as well, at least at least those who are political at all. There's a lot of business leaders uh, as well going. But those who are in politics represent, I would say, you know, all of the political spectrum. There, There is still a fair amount of secrecy about the conference. And, and as you know, the media is not allowed to uh, cover it. And so what do you make of that, of the fact that there is still a fair amount of secrecy? Well, the notion here is similar to what is at work at the Davos forums, the one in the uh, in Switzerland and then the summer one in China. And premiers had a chance to attend the one in China when we were there uh, with the trade mission that the, the timing was the same, perhaps not quite the same at Davos, but I, I think the principle at work here is they want to ensure that all the participants speak freely uh, and aren't worried necessarily about their comments sort of being reinterpreted by others who might then, you know, sort of go and talk to the media and say, here's what we've just talked about. I think that's the principle at work. Mm. Why do you think you were, you were, you were only the fifth premier in Canada to ever be invited? Why do you, what do you think got you tapped to go? I have been asking myself that question since the former <laughs> Premier McKenna call, but I, I think it has to do with the province uh, and not, not myself, not the government. Uh, what's happening now in Saskatchewan is pretty special. Uh, we are, uh, we are, you know, I think, emerging as a place that li- quite literally has what the world wants, uh, especially the economies of the world that are fastest growing and have a, a growing middle class that require for example, or want demand more protein-intense diets means that energy is in demand, fertilizer is in demand, and the food that we grow is in demand. And so, you know, I think Saskatchewan's on the map. And I've said pretty consistently now for a number of years that I'm going to take any opportunity I can to try to tell the Saskatchewan story to attract interest here, to attract investment. Uh, And I think what's happening in the province, what's been happening here for the last uh, six, seven years is, is a big part of the reason why Perhaps this invitation came. Uh, you know, there's been other events that have sort of put us on the map to it. The the BHP potash takeover bid, I think, uh, had a lot of people learning how to pronounce Saskatchewan not too many years mm. ago. Bilderberg's also known for for talent spotting. They they invited Bill Clinton before he was president, and Tony Blair before he was a household name. You're probably aware of that. Are are you thinking at all that they might be looking at your future and the role you might play in politics in Canada in the future? I, I don't know. I, I really don't. Uh, it's tough for me to answer that question, Sheila. I, I don't think so. Certainly that's not what former Premier McKenna uh, had to say when we chatted. Um, so I, I, I don't think so, but it's hard for me to answer that question. Mm, they talked about some. Some people talk about how uh, Bilderberg wanted uh, free trade in North America. Bill Clinton went before he was president, and they talked to him about that. And next year he was president, and the year after that we had NAFTA. 
Well, uh, that conspiracy would only work if we didn't already have free trade. Because, of course, free trade in between Canada and the United States was uh, was negotiated and completed between uh, Prime Minister Brian Mulroney and President Ronald Reagan well before Bill Clinton ran. So, But there are lots of... Uh, there are lots of theories about Bilderberg, and I've, I've gotten familiar with some of them okay, on the Okay, so, so what do you make of them? I mean, there's the, the conspiracy theory is that this is a, a shadow government, that they want one currency, one world army. Um, if you've been reading about the conspiracy theories, what do you make of them? I'm not sure why the invitation list, at least for this year, and it's very public, would be constituted as it is if these conspiracy theories had some actual currency, had some... Uh, some sort of truth behind them. Because again, if you take a look at the list, it is people from all spectrums, people who would be advocates, for example, of uh, strong advocates of a more globalized uh, economy of of greater trade between the nations. And those who are, would be arguably a little bit more protectionist if you take a look at some of the finance ministers that are there, some of the political parties that are invited. And I I just think that uh, the, the I guess I, it's a bit curious that most of the conspiracy theories have evolved around this particular group, uh, and there hasn't been a lot around the Davos forums, um, if any, frankly. And I think they're very similar in talking, exploring options for the world to consider in terms of not just uh, 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 issues of foreign affairs, but the economy. Is Davos uh, and, is Davos as secretive? No, but it's not as. I mean, the, I remember the summer uh, Davos in. Uh, uh, when again, when the premiers were in China, coincidentally on a trade mission, and so some of us were able to participate there. The 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 sessions that I participated in were very much closed, uh, and round tables, and no notes taken necessarily, and uh, and sort of blue skying sessions. So I, I I think it's perhaps a little bit different in terms of the amount of uh, media that that covers each event, but very similar in terms of how the forums are structured and what can what is said afterwards uh, uh, to the media. Mm. The head of Google, the head of Amazon.com, with some pretty big, big people there, big names. Who are you most looking forward to meeting? Well, Dr. Kissinger's there, as you probably read. And uh, he, uh, there's somebody that I would really much like to meet. He's, uh, he's got a best-selling book uh, right now in the New York Times bestseller list called uh, On China, or at least it's been on there very recently. Uh, and, of course, he... Uh, uh, he was he was really at the vanguard of opening up what, uh, the Chinese West relations in the Nixon administration. Plus, he was in the Nixon administration, so just uh, I, I think the chance to meet him and uh, chat with him, perhaps about that area of expertise of his and just that period of history, would be pretty be a great opportunity. And what about outside of uh, politicians? Who else? Well, some of the ones that you have mentioned, uh, the the corporate leaders are there. Even the one from Canada, I have not had a chance to. Uh, to uh, visit with the Galen Weston, the Loblaws group. And uh, although uh, we know we wouldn't think we would need to go to England to do that, he'll certainly be there. And so that's a discussion I want to have. I, I have a chance to be, again, hopefully uh, representing, being a voice for the province there and making contacts that are to the province's uh, benefit. And so uh, there's some meetings there that I'd like to I'd like to have with those who are representing the private sector. Mm. And I know taxpayers aren't paying for it. The SAS party's paying for it because of the the requirement of confidentiality. But do you plan to um, maintain complete secrecy on what happens there? Or will you be willing to talk about it when you come back? Well, I'll honor whatever the rules are. And what, 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 are, what are the rules exactly? Well, the, the rules in a general sense are that there's not a lot of specific comment uh, commentary by participants when they when they leave the conference, and so I'm sure there'll be more information on that when we're there. But that's why I didn't, you know, I didn't feel right if the uh, if the taxpayers are supporting the uh, this particular effort, if they're paying for it, uh, then the reporting should be as, should be fulsome. Uh, and uh, I also want to honor the uh, the uh, the rules around this particular meeting. I do think it's a I do think it's a it's an honor for Saskatchewan to participate and. So I want, to, I want to be respectful of the rules. We want to make sure then that taxpayers aren't paying if they can't get in a very specific report on what happens. All right. And we're all wondering here at the Morning Edition, if this really is a group of powerful puppet masters, uh, would you be able to fix it so the riders win the Grey Cup this year? <laughs> if I have the sense that it is as powerful as 
some of the uh, some of the conspiracy theorists think it is. That is the very first question I'm going to ask. Good stuff. All right. Well, thanks for thanks for getting in touch with us this morning. We appreciate it. Thanks. Take care, Sheila. Bye. Saskatchewan Premier Brad Wall on his way to the Bilderberg meetings in England.